How does it feel to face the judgment of the Lord? Maybe not what you think it is. That's what this week's message from Burwood United Methodist Church is about. I'm Tim Wood, the supply pastor, and I'll be preaching on Malachi chapter 2, verse 17 through chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. The background behind this scripture is that the people of Israel are unhappy with God. They're asking, where is the God of justice? They miss God's presence in the temple. God, in turn, has a few complaints about them. And this is what we'll read about in this scripture from Malachi chapter 2, verse 17 through 3, verse 1 through 5. You have made the Lord tired with your words. You say, how have we made him tired? When you say, anyone doing evil is good in the Lord's eyes, or he delights in those doing evil, or where is the God of justice? Look, I am sending my messenger who will clear the path before me. Suddenly the Lord whom you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you take delight is coming, says the Lord of heavenly forces. Who can endure the day of his coming? Who can withstand his appearance? He is like the refiner's fire or the cleaner's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. They will belong to the Lord, presenting a righteous offering. The offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in ancient days and in former years. I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be quick to testify against the sorcerers, the adulterers, those swearing falsely, against those who cheat the day laborers out of their wages, as well as who oppress the widow and the orphan, and against those who brush aside the foreigner and do not revere me, says the Lord of heavenly forces. This ends the reading of the scripture. Judgment Day. What does that make you think of? Probably not something pleasant. The idea of a judgment day is frightening. God's judgment can be frightening, but it shouldn't be. Today's scripture from the prophet Malachi is about judgment. Israelites are not happy with God. They don't know why evil people don't pay for their crimes. They don't understand why God is not in the temple. Where is the God of justice, they ask. The Israelites should know why God seems to be apart from them. They have violated God's law in many ways. The people no longer took the law seriously. They didn't bring their tithes to God. They ignored the Sabbath. They married pagans. The priests were corrupt. Have you ever felt that God is not present in your life? That God is not doing what you hope God will do? We must confront the possibility that we are doing what the Israelites were doing. We are not taking God seriously enough. While we are not required to bring pure, unblemished animals to church for sacrifice, we are to bring an open heart. We need to tell God about the ways we have failed God. We must not see worship as just going through the motions. Our faith is more than coming to church on Sunday. Our faith is communicating with God through reading the Bible and through prayer. Faith is not something that should be compartmentalized. You don't take your faith out of its compartment Sunday and put it back after worship. The practice of faith is ongoing. Faith should influence the way we live seven days a week. God became tired of the Israelites asking the same question repeatedly. So God took action. God sent a messenger to the people to render judgment upon them. Now this scripture reading has been interpreted to be about the coming of John the Baptist and Jesus. That's a very valid interpretation. I also think it refers to something more immediate. God is responding to specific acts of the nation of Israel. The messenger brings judgment upon the people of Israel. It's frightening. Who can endure the day of his coming? Who can withstand his appearance? He is like the refiner's fire or the cleaner's soap. In the steel industry, to refine means to take raw material and put it in a very hot furnace. The fire removes impurities. The process also adds things that make the steel better. That describes the refining that comes with God's judgment. The purpose of divine judgment is not to punish, but to prepare the way of the Lord. It is to bring restoration and renewed life. It is to train the people in obedience to the covenant so they may offer reverent praise. That's what is in store for the Israelites, although in a spiritual sense. God's messenger is not coming solely to condemn the people. 
God's messengers coming to help the people. One of Israel's problems was corrupt priests. The messenger would purify the priestly tribe of Levi, thus giving Israel priests who were not corrupt. For believers, God's judgment is not a one-time event. God calmly and patiently watches over us, working with us carefully to make us into a beautiful work of art. We have nothing to fear from the refining process that God has in store for us. The challenges of life are part of that refining process. I do not believe that God makes bad things happen to test us. In this world, we face plenty of trials as it is. But God can use those challenges to refine us. Difficult experiences can be used by God to remove what weakens us and add new qualities that help us. Ultimately, there will be a judgment day. We will stand before God in Christ. God will finish the task of refining us, removing all of our impurities and enhancing the beauty that God created in each one of us. God's promise of judgment and restoration is revealed in Jesus, whose forgiveness first acknowledges sin and then announces sin's cure. Jesus does not cover up for our sin. Jesus recognizes our shortcomings and cleanses us. Jesus was born into the world not to ignore our imperfections and rough existence, but to refine us. In Jesus' crucifixion, Jesus endured the ultimate refining fire that we should have endured. Jesus rose from the dead to show us the perfectly refined, flawless person we should strive to be. Don't fear the judgment of God. It shows that God doesn't see our rebellion as something to condemn us for. For God, it's an opportunity to move us forward. That makes it our opportunity to move closer to God along our faith journey. Amen.